Next up for us is talking about factoring trinomials. And first we're talking about factoring trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. So this is just a generic way for us to talk about a type of trinomial. b and c are in the place where we would, we would usually find numbers. And notice that this trinomial starts with x squared. We won't see a coefficient on the x squared, and we'll see numbers here in a middle term with a regular x, and we'll see for a third term a number by itself, a constant. And so this is where we're focusing right now. And here's a trinomial of that form, x squared plus bx plus c. It starts with x squared plus, not bx, here in this example, b is 4 and c is the number 3, a positive 3. So this trinomial, when it's factored, gives this result, x plus 1 times x plus 3. And what we're going to do right now is just look at some clues that we have in a trinomial about how it should be written in factored form. Uh, so just remember that factoring is trying to do the opposite of multiplication. Factoring is taking a trinomial and coming up with what are these two binomials that multiplied together gave us that trinomial. And the key to figuring this process out is to think about the FOIL method. Think about what is really going on when we do the multiplication of these two factors to come up with this trinomial. So the first thing to notice is the x squared is coming from the multiplication of the x that we see first in this set of parentheses and this x that's first in this set of parentheses. And that's our the first step, the f, in FOIL, that x times x is x squared. So it's this x and this x that are causing this x squared to be our first term in the trinomial. Let's look at the last, what we have in the last spots, the 1 and, and the 3. These two multiplied together are going to equal this last term of the trinomial. 1 times 3 is 3. That's our last step of FOIL. Um, let's just see what, what, what happens with the outer and inner step. So outer is doing the x times 3 to give us 3x. Inner is the 1 times x to give us 1x. And we have like terms. Those two like terms combined will give us 4x. So we can see the three terms of our po polynomial, th this trinomial. And just notice that when it was in factored form, we had two sets of parentheses. The first term in each set was an x. And the numbers that were in the last term in each set multiplied together to give us our last number there. And it also looks like if we added them together, it would give us this middle number. So lots of interesting things going on there. Let's just move on to another example and, and try to see if we can see some of these same patterns going on. Okay, so let's look at what it would be like to try to factor this trinomial. So there are definitely some things we can assume. We can already know about this answer. We are dealing with two sets of parentheses, and in the first spot in each of these sets of parentheses, the first term is going to be an x, because that's how we come up with that x squared. If we're thinking of factors, things multiplied together to come up with these three terms, well, it's those two that are taking care of that first term, the x squared. And it's going to be the numbers back here multiplied together that will equal 12, but we have a few different choices of, of numbers that multiplied together should equal 12. So bear with me as we go through a few examples here. We're first going to try, what about 1 and 12? There's a pair of numbers that multiplied together would equal that last term, 12. So let's do FOIL method. The first x times x is x squared. We've got for the outer x times 12 is 12x, and inner is 1x, and then we have Last is a positive 12. Combine those like terms, and we've got x squared plus 13x plus 12. So it's not the 7 we were looking for, and we're maybe still seeing that pattern you might have spotted earlier, which was not only do these numbers multiply together to equal the last number 12, but what happens when we add them together? It's giving us that middle number. Well, let's look at another example. This time, we're trying 2 and 6. We're going to do FOIL method. 
It's going to give us x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 12. Combine the like terms in the middle, and we've got x squared plus 8x plus 12. So we're not getting to the 7, and we're still seeing that pattern that these two numbers that we're dropping in multiplied together equal the last term, and added together they equal the coefficient of that middle term. So I hopefully you've been waiting for this try right here, x plus 3 times x plus 4. It should work because the 4 plus the 3 is equaling that 7, and multiplied together they're equaling the 12. And this is basically the process that we're using for factoring. It's thinking of what are the numbers that multiplied together are going to equal that third term, but if we add them together, they're going to equal that middle term. So we know that the x plus 3 times x plus 4 is correct because FOIL method is showing that that's the pair that's working. But if we see, there are clues that these are also numbers that multiplied together equal the last term and added together equal that middle term. Okay, here's one for you to try. Factor x squared plus 5x plus 6. Pause the video and take a few minutes to try this one and then come back to the screen and we will look at the answer. Okay, so you should start out at least by making this assumption that we're dealing with two sets of parentheses and the first term in each set of parentheses is going to be an x because those two x's multiplied together will give us our first term x squared. And hopefully your next thoughts are, well, what's this pair of numbers that multiplied together they're going to equal a positive 6, but added together they'll equal a positive 5. And Positive 2 and positive 3, that's the only pair of numbers that's going to work to do that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So we've got our answer. And just to point it out that these two factors, the x plus 2 and the x plus 3, they can be written in any order because it's a multiplication. Order does not matter. So if you have x plus 3 and then x plus 2, absolutely fine.